the drug companies are not satisfied with having 50 million patients on statins. They now say it is beneficial to be on statins even if you have normal to low cholesterol. That's because of a study showing decreased heart attacks and decreased mortality in the short term when taking a statin. These are drugs like Mevacor, Zocor, Lipitor, Crestor, and on and on. The profits made on these drugs are obscene. Lipitor alone takes in $12 billion a year. I have always said, and I know research has been showing this to be true, that the benefit of statins is not in the lowering of cholesterol, but because of its anti-inflammatory action. So you might say, who cares how it works as long as it works? Not a bad argument. I'm always amazed when looking at the history and information of the universe and how so many things have to be a certain way for the earth to be compatible with advanced life. Everything from physical laws to interactions and events between stars and planets, it's obvious there's an intelligent design with very little room for error, and it's all exceedingly complex. When looking at life and biological systems, we see the same pattern. The more we learn, the more complex we f that we find these interactions to be. When taken at face value, that cholesterol is bad and needs to be treated has spurred the drug companies to develop an enzyme poison that disables a critical step in the formation of cholesterol. It's obvious that this therapy is highly effective. If I take a patient with so-called elevated cholesterol and place him or her on one of these medications, the cholesterol will immediately drop by up to 40%. Doctors obviously like this, as exemplified by the 50 million people on statins. The problem is that the pathway to make cholesterol is also the pathway for other critical molecules that have important functions in the body. Now one of these is the nutrient or cofactor coenzyme Q10, which is critical for energy production for the cell. It's also a powerful antioxidant, 50 times more powerful than vitamin E. Coenzyme Q10 is depleted by statins. It's as simple as that. And the depletion of CoQ10 is bad. This is what we find in people with heart failure. Depleting CoQ10 would be a good way to accelerate aging. Not a bad strategy for disabling people and causing human misery in general. The CoQ10 issue is not new. Merck patented CoQ10 combined with a statin, but they didn't need to bother actually making it because doctors will gladly prescribe Lipitor without it, and patients will take it all the same. CoQ10 deficiency is thought to be related to the statin side effects of muscle pain, liver damage, and neuropathy. One of the frightening aspects of these side effects is that many times they're permanent. Now, besides CoQ10, another important molecule whose production is blocked by the statin drugs are the dolichols. These molecules are critical in the formation of neuropeptides that play a role in the formation of emotions. This may be what is behind the reports that statins may increase suicide, aggression, violence, road rage, and other emotional disorders. I've had many patients on statins complain of issues with memory. Recent research has shown that cholesterol, the most abundant molecule of the dry weight of the brain, plays a big role in the physical process of storing memories. Cholesterol cannot pass the blood-brain barrier so it's manufactured in the brain by glial cells, and this process is, is suppressed by the statins. Cholesterol is also the skeleton backbone of many hormones and of vitamin D. This includes the sex hormones and the adrenal hormones. Lack of these hormones can also accelerate the aging process. So 
So you may say, well, what about the good effects of statins, like reducing the risk for a heart attack and a stroke? More and more research is finding that this is probably due to their anti-inflammatory effects. It has been found that statins lower nuclear factor kappa beta, a powerful stimulator of immune response. Like anything else in the drug world, there are risk, risks versus benefits to this. The creator designed NFKB to protect us. Like with other powerful immune suppressors we use in medicine, there are potential dangerous side effects, such as increased risk of infections, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. Think of Vioxx, did the same thing. Several studies have shown an increased cancer incidence in statin users. From all of this, I would say statins should never be used for prevention except for those with familial hypercholesterolemia, which is a fairly rare disease. Only one in 500 people have this. Now, statins are effective for the reduction of the risk of a coronary event or stroke, especially for those with advanced disease. So there is a role for them in this case. There are safer alternatives to reduce risk, however, many of which are nutritional and lifestyle. Now, when a cardi cardiologist wants to get my patient's cholesterol very low, I'll almost always disagree. Sometimes I advise low-dose statins combined with CoQ10 and other natural anti-inflammatory treatments for those with artery disease or those at very high risk. Low cholesterol is a risk factor for death, so we don't want it low unless it's naturally low. If a patient is taking a statin because of the greed and cover-up of the pharmaceutical companies, that's not good. So what's the bottom line? Well, I would say don't accept that you need to go on a statin, especially if you have no known artery disease or if you're at low risk. If you're at high risk, do a complete lab profile, including the VAP lipid panel. This includes the LDL and HDL particle size, the LP little a level, I'd also get a homocysteine test. Thyroid test is really important. Get a sensitive CRP, maybe a CT scan of the heart or an endopat test, which is an artery function test. You can also do an ultrasound of the arteries in your neck to get the intimal thickness of the artery. I would also recommend testing your sex hormone levels. Of the 50 million people that are on statins, probably 10% should be. Now, yes, this might make a few of the drug companies go bust, but let's hope they can find a different business model, one that helps mankind. If you like this information, please hit the subscribe button above. This is Dr. Gerhauser. Thanks for watching.